When I was about 26 years old, I first learned from a friend of this remarkable plant explorer named Nikolai Vavilov. I had already begun to do plant explorations myself. And as I read more about him, I realized that he was not only my hero, but the hero of a great many people that I admired. And so Nikolai Vavilov was one of the most peculiar scientists that we've ever had in Western scientific history because he clearly understood that culture and agriculture were one and the same and that both of them built upon the wild biodiversity of their regions and that through understanding those interconnections we could move towards food security and away from periodic famine. You know, nearly all the people who look at Nikolai Vavilov and his legacy point to the seed bank that he created and sort of this sense that the collection was his most important contribution goes through all the literature over the last 80 years. The interesting thing is that he had two other great contributions. First of all, he was the first to map the centers of diversity and today every major conservation organization uses a variation on his map to do their global conservation planning. World Wildlife Fund, Conservation International, the Nature Conservancy, all have these maps of global hotspots that essentially mirror and build upon Vavilov's intellectual contributions. But his third is his means of doing such detailed field notes and photos from each area that he visited on five continents that today we can use those data as a benchmark by which we can measure global change and globalization and their effects on traditional agriculture. So his uh, contributions are really threefold. The collection of uh, seeds that was very tangible and something in between, which is how we measure change in our food system. The point is that by traveling some of his routes where he left the most detailed notes and actually literally traveling the same footpaths or trails that he did to markets and to agricultural landscapes, we can use his notes and photos to actually see the number of varieties that he saw that we can still find there today, which ones were lost, and talk with farmers and see why they were lost or why uh, they've shifted in elevation. And so it's very important to take uh, the few opportunities that we have where someone left a detailed enough record to uh, give us a, a benchmark and compare what they saw at one point in time with what we see now. And fortunately, in a few places where I traveled, there have been a few snapshots in between Vavilov and my own work where we can really put together the whys and hows of uh, agrobiodiversity change, what some people call genetic erosion. What we found is that it's not simply a loss of crop varieties, but farmers are very smart and think about their landscape in a very dynamic way. And the great thing is that in some cases, if we go to the very same place, we see a different mix of crops, but up a thousand feet or down a thousand feet, some of those same crops that we may have thought were lost have actually shifted into a different uh, agrohabitat or, or ecological niche. So farmers um, are moving crops around, uh, borrowing seeds from neighbors or from relatives in adjacent countries that they are actively observing how the climate is changing and responding to it very, very uh, vigorously, dynamically, and appropriately. I've worked on at least six books with Island Press, uh, both uh, being a contributor to anthologies, a co-author of books like Forgotten Pollinators, um, an introducer of uh, Faith in the Seed, the wonderful uh, rediscovered work of Henry David Thoreau, and of course, uh, Why Some Like It Hot and, and Where Our Food Comes From. Island Press connects with people and communities on the most urgent issues of our time. And because it has a mission, it doesn't publish fluff.